Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that, man? Going to the arcade and playing video games! Oh, yeah! Yeah! I don't know if you've got them up where you live, but um, a friend of mine actually started an old school arcade that is um, is just that. It's full of old old video games. He buys the cabinets. He gets either the original games or he gets uh, uh, mods and puts them in the old cabinets. And you go up there and you you pay whatever whatever it is especially has so it's like a free play you pay you pay five bucks ten bucks and you just all the games are open you just walk wow. out and play and um, there's they're building one here in Houston or they were right before the uh, COVID hit uh, but there's there's a place up in Dallas and it's called Bishop Cidery and it's in the warehouse district of Dallas. There's not near it really anything else, and these people they rented or they rented they built out this bar in this warehouse, and mm. it's like an acre big, and it's just rows and rows of rows of every video game you can possibly imagine. Wow! And and then they brew their own cider, so you go up and you pay your ten bucks to get in, and they give you a wristband, and then they've got a food truck outside, and then they serve uh, hard ciders. So they're not so, you know, they're di- not Dickens, are they? Dick and cider? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the 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 hard Dick and cider is the ones you got to watch out for. But, uh, <laughs> but if, no, you, if you can't get a Dick and cider bottle, try to get a Dick and cider can. <laughs> <laughs> Check your local listings, right? <laughs> but yeah, dude, like the the old school arcades are coming back because again, I think there That's was. Sweet. There's just so much. I mean, the the and not to knock it because if you're a gamer, don't for a second think that that I'm I'm knocking your hobby or your passion or anything. It's not. It's, but the the home consoles really there, there was something about going up and dropping a quarter and getting as far as you could, and then that was as far as you could get. Right. And so then you'd practice to get that little bit better, that little bit better, that little bit better. Um, well, you it, didn't. You know, it's kind of like when we were talking about going to a concert. It, it's it's such a different experience, and really going to an arcade is kind of like that. It, it's so mm-hmm. different than walking into a Pizza Hut and playing a console they've got over in the corner versus going to a legit arcade where games are just lined up and you're hearing all the boops and bo- boops and beeps and buzzes and that, and it's like totally. it's like it's like teenager crack, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, I don't know. We we really haven't experienced anything like that. I, I guess these gaming uh, tournaments that they have probably mm-hmm. has that kind of feel. But I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's another one of those things that's kind of lost. Well, like I said, it's coming back and it's coming back strong. And um, it's kind of it, it's funny because you mentioned you know the console over in the corner because everybody has nostalgia for Pizza Hut and they like to knock on Pizza Hut now because it's not the greatest pizza, but Back then, you didn't really care too much because there was this kind of ambiance. You know, people weren't as mm-hmm. as master chefy in their thoughts. You know, you're it, it's it's crust, sauce, cheese, pepperoni, and yeah. then you're done. And then it's Friday night, and you go home. Nobody nobody cared that much. Um, yeah, and some pizzas were better than others, but but regardless, it was before the the delivery. You'd go and have a sit down at a restaurant, and there was the the, the video game that you could play. Um, on our way back from the river the other day, we drove through a town called Gonzales, Gonzales, Texas. Look it up; it's famous for one thing. Yeah. If you've, yep, it is where the Texas Revolution started. Wow. So, um, back in the 1800s, when Mexico was like, "Hey, y'all, get get off our land," um, there was a cannon in Gonzales, and the Mexican army showed up and said, "Hey, give us that cannon," and the response by the Texans was, "Come and take it," and so they. <laughs> They posted that flag that you've seen, where it says "Come and take it," and it's got a cannon below it. Right. That's that's where that happened. Huh. Otherwise, otherwise, you drive through Gonzales and there's nothing there. Like there's there's very little there. It's a little single light storefront. The highway runs through it. Quiet little town. I'd never been there before the other day, and we just drove through. But I saw something intriguing. 
and it was a Pizza Hut restaurant with the old school logo on it, <laughs> and it's it's Pizza Hut Wing Street, but Pizza Hut Classic. Cool. And I looked that up, and apparently they're going back to the old format in certain re- in certain restaurants in, in small towns. And um, I was like, okay, well, it's it was only open for takeout and delivery, and we were driving through there. But I might have to make a pilgr- pilgrimage out to Old Gonzales just yep. to sit down in a Pizza Hut Classic just to 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 get that feel again. Because... Get it back, yeah. I mean, even bring me bring <laughs> bring it out in the red cup, the red red transparent cup. You know, uh, I want I want the little uh, the little pizza guy on the little hand puppet that you used to get. And all that. I mean, yeah, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> That's the 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 stained glass. Yeah, uh, lanterns. Lanterns. Yep. <laughs> That's some fun stuff. Yeah, and it's funny because when they Becky and I, you know, growing up, going out on dates, it was Pizza Hut. That's that's where we went, and. Just like everything else, you know, they built the new ones across town because that's the busier part of town now. And it lost that feel, man. For some reason, those old Pizza Huts were comfortable. We're not even talking Mm -hmm. about video games here. We're talking about Pizza Hut. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, I'm glad to hear that they're kind of bringing that back, which does tie into an early arcade experience for me. Hint, hint, since we're talking about Pizza Hut. and We'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, man, that's awesome. I would love to go to an old style Pizza Hut. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, that like I said, I I had to Google it just to see what that was about, and I was like, oh, awesome. And like you say, you know, the arcade because like again, when when growing up in a small town, we didn't have a proper arcade. Yeah. Um, there were there were places that had video games. Um, ours, uh, we had a Pizza Hut, but they only had like the one little Miss, Miss Pac Man console. Yeah, we had a Mister Gaddy's. That had like like five or six video games along a wall, yeah. and that was like a Friday night thing for us kids. You can go up there, and Dad would throw a five dollar bill into that uh, change maker and hand you a bunch of quarters, and then you just felt like you were on top of the world, you know? Like, <laughs> and of course it was five dollars in the eighties, so that was actually a lot. For it, 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 went, <laughs> yeah. it went quite a while, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean we had a blast, and then of course you know the real arcades where it's all dark. And the lights are just, like you say, they're just blipping and the sound's coming yeah. out of all the video games at once. And, it, you know, every now and then a couple of them would, like, match up and they'd play a chord of video game sounds. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, man, so what is, what are some of your favorite uh, favorite games, either old or new or somewhere in between? What was your what was your go-to when you went to the arcade? Uh, well, you know, to, to kind of back it up just a little bit, the, the the voyage into the video games because, you know, uh, my folks split when I was nine years old, ten years old, and so weekends is kind of we got to hang out with dad and we would go shoot pool, pinball machines. I was really big into pinball, and uh, you slowly started to segue into those other machines over there that took your quarters, right? That you know, <laughs> which would be an oddball game at the time, but. You know, obviously it all goes back to, as far as the actual console game, you, you know, Space Invaders was probably the first one I remember putting my eyes on and going, wow, this is really something different. Um, I remember growing up 77, 78, and uh, a guy that lived down the road had Pong, at, you know, that you could play. Uh, so, you know, so I was always kind of around these things, but I never just totally you know got absorbed by any of them but uh yeah man i'd say space invaders was probably the first one that i remember actually dropping a quarter in and doing terrible at of course (laughs) the thing was these games these games were not designed to win they were not also designed to get good at they were just designed to be played and then one kid would play it and walk away and another kid would play it and walk away and that was that was the design. Was, right, yeah. <laughs> you just imagine it was like a live-action Pac-Man. It's just like waka, waka, waka on the quarters. Yep. <laughs> but, yeah, say, same thing, man. When I was a kid, um, my when I was a kid, my dad worked at Radio Shack. He was a store manager at a Radio Shack around the corner from our house. So my mom would take me up there and you know, while he was working. And back in the you know 70s, when Radio Shack had all the toys you know they had like yep. the the fire helmet with the f- flashing light and they had all the little electronic d- 
doodads and noisemakers and stuff. They had Space Invaders, like it was a it was a computer console sort of thing. It was it was demo only. I think it, you had to. I, I don't even know what it was. I know you couldn't buy it. Like mm. you could, you, you had to special order it or something. They only had one, and you had to be careful of it. And it was covered in plastic, but it was a Space Invaders, and you could you know move the joystick left or right and do this. And I was probably like five, four or five years old, and I'm sitting there like duck, 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 duck. <laughs> of course, not good, not good at all, but enough to know that I was having fun. Like I was blasting those guys, like get them, get them, <laughs> you know, and. uh yeah, then of course, sometime later, saw it in in the, in the mall or something, and was like, "Ooh, that's yeah, it's in color." Yeah. And what was weird too, it seemed like there was a period there where, you know, you, if you got used to a certain machine that actually had the joystick, and you go somewhere else, and they would have the two buttons for back and forth instead of, mm-hmm. you know, you, and you're like, "Holy crap, I can't do this," <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't know how to play this game. Like, it all yeah. looks the same, but I don't. <laughs> It's like picking up your first Nintendo controller after you've been on Atari, you know, for years and years, and you're like, uh, you mean I gotta push several buttons now instead of one? Dude, like modern video game systems, I don't get just because, uh, <laughs> like, and I, I know, I know, like, I, I evolved probably up through the, yeah, up through the PlayStation Two, and then that's pretty much around the time my wife and I got together, and you know, like doing other things besides playing video games with friends. And then I remember going over to a friend's house. He had a big uh, projection system for uh, Call of Duty. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, play. He handed me the controller, and it was like, I don't, this has got like <laughs> 16 and a half buttons and four levers and a couple of drum pads on it. And I was like, I, I, I know that I'm sounding like an old fart right now, but I really don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, you know, it's always going to change, too. But, you know, it, it's just funny to sit back. And think about the way we've seen it change, you know, how it's still a part of everything we do. Matter of fact, I mean, gaming's probably bigger than ever, but, you know, you you have a definite stopping point when you say, okay, I'm checking out. And it's usually around the time you get married, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or the, if you don't, then you don't stay married very long, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's funny because for, for one of my birthdays, God, it's my 30th birthday, maybe, maybe, like, even yet. A buddy of mine went on Craigslist and bought me a uh, a Nintendo Entertainment System, the original Nintendo. Cool. With, like, tw- with like 20 games on it. Yeah. And it was, you know, obviously Mario and Duck Hunt and, like, all the, the, the OG games, you know, Ikari Warriors. Right. The same, you know, we had a blast for, like, two weeks. Yeah, and then that thing kind of just rolled up, <laughs> into the drawer, and we yeah. just never played it again. Like I pulled it out of the drawer, like maybe five or six years later, and was like, "Do we still need this?" <laughs> I mean, it's fun to, it's, it's cool to have whenever you feel like going through the motions of actually pulling it out and setting it up. But if you're not playing it every day, yeah, you know, it's just kind of like, and then you never get better. So you, <laughs> you're, you're always, you're always remembering when you used to be good back in the day, but still dropping Mario in that second or third hole. Oh yeah. <laughs> so as far as absolute favorites i mean i i know i don't i didn't know if we want to kind of progress kind of through the years because the technology changed but i didn't know if we want to just talk about specific favorites that we've got if we want to start that, early on I mean, and walk our way up or i don't think it matters man i think favorites are favorites i mean okay, really because i was going to mention um, you know, for, I, I, I sucked at it so bad. I was never good at it, but pole position was always one of my favorite <laughs> games. Oh yeah. P- probably because of the gear shifter and the gas pedal made it feel so much more real than yeah. just like a steering wheel. Yeah. You know, you could actually like, you know, manipulate the speed of the car by changing the gear shift. And that was new at the time. Like yeah. that was a, that was a big deal. It sure was. Um, and I was, I remember because of like pole position, a friend of mine had a go-kart and I was actually scared to drive it. Cause I was like, man, I'm really not a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually drove a real car and it wasn't that hard. <laughs> but yeah, my, my, when we lived in the, in Portland down South, my grandmother lived in Houston and we'd come up here, you know, every couple of months or, you know, whenever you go see grandma holidays or whatever, well, there's a town 
uh, called Victoria, and it's exactly halfway between Houston and Portland. And they had a restaurant that my dad liked, and we'd stop in there with the kettle. Do you remember the kettle? Yeah, sure Back did. in the day? Yeah. Uh, I, and they had, uh, I'll remember it forever, they had a pole position machine, and then they had, like, this weird witchcraft machine that, like, you put your hand on, and it would, like, check your biorhythms. And it had, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, I didn't understand what that meant, but I thought I always thought it was kind of a weird combination. That You're you right. Have, like the, the car, the car racing game, and then the the, the new age. Uh, but that's what you're supposed to do. You drive the car and get all worked up and then check and make sure you're not going to die from a heart attack from the stress. True. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'd sit there and just like, while they were eating, I'd sit there and just play pole position and just, wow. rrr, 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 rrr. and then you do you like in fourth gear and you realize that curve's coming up and you just don't care to slow down. You're just right. like, I'm flying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, man, it, it, it ended up being Galaga. I think I even said it on a post out there. I posted the picture, but there's something about Galaga that's just timeless. I mean, you've seen so many games that are versions of that. I mean, even, even you know, it kind of is a ripoff of, of... It's like you took Defender and Space Invaders and combined it, and you kind of got Galaga. But mm -hmm. it's amazing how still challenging that game is because, like you said, where does it end? It just keeps getting harder <laughs> as you go, you know? And uh always loved that one. Um, Defender, I was a big fan of. You know, you can kind of go through the steps. You got Space Invaders, which was the big thing. Then you got Asteroids, you know, mm -hmm. which I was just, I could kill it on uh, <laughs> on Atari. But the console, oh, yeah. terrible. Absolutely terrible. And, uh, you know, you do, oh, hyperspace, and you just pop up and, because, you yep. know, you're going to pop up right where that asteroid was every time. Or you couldn't control the jets, right? You'd hit it too much, and you'd, go, and you'd just take off. And... <laughs> yep. So, I mean, you had to have a touch for these things, man. Uh, centip I, I, I centipede with that... the ball. That was a new I, I was thing. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, like you said, like you'd, you'd go to a friend's house, like whoever had the game, whether it was you or your friend, or you know, you'd play, and you'd get good at a game on the <laughs> on the home system. And you'd be like, you'd like, you'd go to the mall and be like, "Oh man, I got this!" And then it would just whoop your butt. And you're like, <laughs> "This game sucks." You know, you're like kicking yeah. the dirt. <laughs> but centipede yeah, was such centipede a weird thing because you had to, you know, learn how to control that ball. And and I love the fact if you just basically just held the fire button, right? That was always a big plus for me. <laughs> yeah. You just kind of move it a little bit here, like a little bit there. And just... yeah. <laughs> Same story, man. I could kill it on Atari, which. You know, everything's just squares and octagon mm -hmm. shapes. <laughs> Versus when you look at the game, it's actually got some graphics, you know. But, uh, yeah, uh, that was that one always pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned, like, the Atari home system. So, like, everybody, the 2600 was, yeah. the, like, the definitive Atari system. That's what everybody had. Oh, yeah. Um, one Christmas, uh, woke up and had an Atari under the tree, and it was the 5200. Ooh. Which was... The upgrade. It was the upgrade. The only problem was they didn't make many games. Yeah, for they just had a handful of games. <laughs> and uh, so, like, my dad liked football. And so there was a football game for uh, the 5200, but it was real time. Ah. So, yeah. So imagine, with, without commercials, but imagine playing a football game where the timer stops every time there's a down <laughs> or, or, or anything like that. Yeah, and you're talking like little, like two bit. I don't even. It's not even four bit. It's like little football guys that are like this big, and they're all like, brit, brit, brit. <laughs> and my dad loved it because he just kicked my ass like left and right, and I hated this game, like because <laughs> it took forever. I I never. I couldn't. I couldn't win. And then even when you did win, like say you like got out in the open and you caught the ball and you were running like. Like a completely undefended touchdown. It was like, Brit, 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 Brit. And, uh, <laughs> oh man. But yeah, well, like. I graduated to a ColecoVision, which would still. Nice. I, I bought the, uh, the, 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 the added on plug in that would actually play all your Atari 52 or, yeah, 5200 games or 2600 games. 26, yeah. And, uh, so that was kind of cool because you still could play your old games but use the, the, the updated system. 
and I found an Activision game called Dragon Attack, which is like this is like Galaga and Space Invaders mixed with these really cool looking creatures that come down, and you're basically a shoot 'em up. I love shoot 'em up games back then. Mm-hmm. You know, anytime that I'm a spaceship or whatever, and I'm just blowing things up, I'm a happy guy. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Well, and like like I said, you know, for me, it's like I liked I liked the the, the driving games, like the, yep. the car games, and I like it's weird because I'm not really a car guy, but games like Spy Hunter, you know, oh, yeah. those sorts of things where, and I, I was like even like the the little theme song for Spy Hunter was like the little dun 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 dun, dun, dun you know, and you like push the button and like. Sp- Lay out the stuff to make you know, either the smoke screen or the uh, the oil slick or whatever. Right. Make people crash. Yeah, and it's funny because like my memories of Spy Hunter because of the way your imagination works. My memories of Spy Hunter were very much more James Bondy. Sure. Than looking at it now, where it's like an aerial view of a car going. Bzz, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> but man, I loved I loved Spy Hunter, man. It and what's so funny, cool. too, because in your mind, you're thinking, man, the graphics really made a jump when you got to that point, you know, when you think mm-hmm. about it versus what the other games were. But still, you look at it and go, eh, it's, it wasn't that much, was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of that, I mean, you, how disappointed were you in, you know, you, you go play Pac-Man and then Atari released their version and you get it home, you're like, what is this crap? Why does Pac-Man mm-hmm. have an eyeball? <laughs> yeah. Different, and all the different. ghosts, the, the ghosts are all the same colors, and you're eating dots, or you're not eating, you're not eating dots, you're eating, you know, rectangles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arc, there, arc, arc, <laughs> arc. there, I mean, there, there was certainly like, there were certain games that the, the smaller technologies were certainly an advantage of. Of like they were perfect for that technology. Whenever you try to upgrade them, like you're not gonna have a <laughs> a, a, a virtual reality Pac Man. It just doesn't look right, you know. But right. <laughs> but then you have that property. You're gonna certainly use it as best you can. Let's see. We had uh, we had Pac Man. Then we had Miss Pac Man, which is mm-hmm. probably the one I played the most. I don't know why. Uh, but I don't know. But then you had what was the other one? Was it Super Pac Man or what did they call it? Remember when he would eat one thing and get really big and take mm-hmm. up almost like a quarter of the screen? Oh yeah. Well, and, and it's funny because it's it's the age old question um, asked in Wayne's World when he asks uh, <laughs> the video game. He's like, "What's the difference between Pac Man and Mrs. Pac Man?" And he's like, "Mrs. Pac Man has a little bow on her head." <laughs> right. right. But the difference between Pac Man and Mrs. Pac Man was that. Pac-Man ran in uh, patterns, and yep. Mrs. Pac-Man they ran randomly. Right. So it was kind. Of, it was a kind of a harder game and more interesting and and what. So once Mrs. Pac-Man started being replaced and kind of being favored because it was a more challenging game, then original Pac-Man just kind of went away. Yep. Like why they didn't upgrade Pac-Man the original. Since it was the property, I don't know, but I was, I remember being a kid being like, why is Mrs. Pac-Man everywhere? <laughs> and Pac-Man's not. Like, isn't Pac-Man the star of the show? Well, but... well, you think about it because, I mean, you had the, the Pac-Man Fever song that came out, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was a phenomenon at the time. I mean, for some reason, Pac-Man was the game, right? Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, Pac-Man Fever, the song, then you had the cartoon that came on Saturday mornings, the Pac-Man cartoon, <laughs> Pac-Man cereal. My mom made me a Pac-Man birthday cake. I mean, <laughs> it's weird when you think about it. It's like, you know, I really wasn't that big of a fan, but it was just that big of a deal. that. Yeah, it was just cultural yeah. phenomenon. It was yeah. big. Um, yeah, same thing. Like, I don't, I don't remember being, like, so totally into it. I mean, I had it on the console, and I played it. I played it when we go to uh, Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there were other games that I liked. You know, it's like the uh, again the ones and, and some of these that I wrote down. They're not in any order of like technology, but like Frogger to me was oh, yeah. harder, harder and a bit more interesting than Pac Man because it was. Uh, well, you're having to well, watch both, all, it, both sides of the screen for things coming. <laughs> you know, for you to make your your jump. You know, it it was definitely harder than Pac Man <laughs> for sure. 
And again, you're talking like Defender and Galaga, like the space inv- the space invaders type games. Yeah. And then they, then whenever you'd go to the arcade and they'd have the furniture, <laughs> like the furniture console uh, stuff with. Uh, like the Star Wars game where you sit oh. in it and uh, the steering wheel where the uh, the steering wheel moves back and forth yeah. like this. And, and the, the graphics in that game looked like the graphics in the movie. Like yeah. that's about as close to yeah. what you've got now with things looking perfect and, and like seamless. Because you'd fly around and like those... those uh, the Battle of Yavin at the end of, of Star Wars, where they're looking at the screen and yeah. you know, he's yeah. Luke's looking at his thing, and you yep. know, like the Tie Fighters are just kind of rendered in this, uh, you know, two D space. And then when you blow them up, they blow up, and it's like you can imagine that you're flying that X wing and just yeah. killing them. <laughs> you're just killing them. I'm glad them. you brought that one up because that's the first, like you said, that's the first console game where I actually sat in one. And controlled this thing, and of course, being a Star Wars nut, and again, like you're just like you're saying, because even at the beginning of it, it would show the Death Star, right? Mm-hmm. Just like in the movie, it would be it would be that graphic, and then it would zoom in on it and show you the track, and then you'd be kind of going into it. Oh man, I mean, <laughs> I, I was I was just blown away by that game, and the step process to that, like we said, we said, you know, Space Invaders and Defender and all this, and then you had Tempest. Oh yeah, Tempest is one of my favorite games uh, because (laughs) you have no idea really what you're doing, (laughs) but the graphics, you know, they zoom in on the screen, you know, and then you'd start shooting again. You just hold the button and you take the (laughs) you take the round knob that was your controller and just spin it, (laughs) and you just be going around the screen and just shooting. But it had good sounds and the the lines, even though we're kind of getting into those graphics. They were just, you know, very uh, geometric designs, but they had color to them. Mm-hmm. And that they carried that over to the Star Wars stuff, too. So that was kind of that time frame of those were the next step, right? And uh, I, I loved both of those. Uh, I think one, one thing to throw in right here, too, is since we're talking about Pizza Hut and Galaga or Pac-Man, any of those... Remember the ones that they would have? It was a two-player console, and you would set at each end of it. Mm-hmm. You put your quarters in, and then when it was the other person's two, the screen would flip upside down, and they would play from the other end of the table. Yep. Oh man, I, <laughs> that just blew my mind when I was a kid. You know. <clears throat> oh, I remember. I remember like the whole concept of two-player games, like on on uh, Atari, because again, playing that football game with my dad. But like, yeah. That, that would that would not. I mean, depending on what game you were playing, like if that other person was good, you'd have to wait your turn, and your center just like, Ugh, well, all right. And, and just the kid logic too, though, of, of this console, because how does it know, you know, how how is it smart enough to flip the screen mm-hmm. for the other guy? It's like you you know, it's kid logic. You're sitting there going, whoa, because yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to get up out of my seat and somebody else sit here and play their part. It just flipped to them on the other side. Well, hey, man, I think right now would be a good time to take a break and talk about one of our sponsors. So uh, we'll be right back. It's time to get going to a special offer at Pizza Hut. Just come in, order a medium or large Pizza Hut pizza to go, and get this new half-gallon thermal jug for just $1.99. And every time you order another medium or large pizza to go, bring back the jug or any Pizza Hut jug. And we'll fill it with Pepsi absolutely free. At your hometown Pizza Hut. Come in for the jug. Come back for the refill. Now, before the break, you are mentioning kid logic and, and just the way things work and you don't quite understand. And I don't think anybody really quite understands how video games work. Yeah. Um, like, even video game designers are building off old technology and, and, and that kind of stuff as far as, like, what, like, it... it uh, um, Tron was extremely fictional until like now, and then you're like, you know what? You could probably get lost in a VR world if you're not careful. Right. I mean, it's it, it's extremely realistic. And, and but one thing I was, um, you know, just kid logic, the way my mind works. So, you know, kid hanging out with my friend, we're out, you know, kicking rocks and you know, doing whatever it is we do. 
practicing new cuss words and riding BMX bikes and stuff. And <laughs> he's like, oh, man, you want to go over to my cousin's house and play in television? <laughs> and I, I swear to God, I thought he literally meant play in television. <laughs> in television. Like, <laughs> like, like virtual reality. Like, we're going to go plug in, and somehow we're going to go run around inside the game. <laughs> and I didn't know how it was going to work. I didn't, I, I mean, it just completely, I was like, completely bamboozled, like, but I was also like, you're on, like, I am so in, <laughs> and like, when we got over there, <laughs> they had an in-television system with like the, the, the little knobs that you turn, like yep. this, like the, they didn't even have joysticks, it was right. like the turning knobs and the buttons. That's the way, being... that's the way ColecoVision was, too, you had yeah. a, you had a number pad, and you had a knob at the top and a button on the side. I remember just being like disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, oh man! <laughs> I thought I thought I was going into Tron world, and here I am. <laughs> That's a letdown. <laughs> waiting my turn. <laughs> oh great, we get to play decathlon. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but do I remember that now? I'm still like, like man, that was. <laughs> I was gonna go play in television. Hell yeah! Yeah. But, but yeah, dude. Like. Again, Tron. Tron. I mean, Tron. Yeah. Their, their games had to be good because yeah. the entire movie was about video games. Like, and, and again, one of those those strange, dark movies that came out of the eighties, where, um, you know, it's it's all about video games, which are pure kid stuff, and yet you've got all these people in here just getting killed, yeah, <laughs> like all day, <laughs> like real life people just <laughs> dead. Yeah. And uh, they're like, well, kind of, you know, it's like, you don't waste your lives so frivolously anymore after you watch Tron. <laughs> you know, and the like, thing is, too, is as a kid watching Tron, you were so enthralled with just the effects that you didn't know there was really a story going on. You knew this dude was trapped in the game, but you really couldn't tell one person from the other. It didn't really matter. You were just looking at those bikes. Yeah. <laughs> The red guys were the bad guys. Right. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, and it's hard to make people that didn't live through that time period how a big of a deal that was because you're really tying into this generational move that's all about these video games, and you're making a movie that looks like that. It mm -hmm. was, I mean, it was, it was ahead of its time. I mean... Now you can do those effects and make it look like that all day long, but back then, that was a stretch, mm -hmm. big stretch. It was, and what was great about Tron was they had so many different games. So yeah. like, not all of the games were on the same. Like, you you could one console might be just the bike game, right. or it might have like three or four, or you'd run through the levels or whatever. Um, because so, I remember some Trons had the spin, the spin knob, and some of them had the uh, controller. Had the 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 transparent the joystick. Yeah, yeah, the transparent and, knob. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Tron was awesome, man. Yeah, and 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 it was hard. Tron uh, was really a hard was, game. Like you 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 were not <laughs> terrible at it. <laughs> yeah, you were, unless you played it all day long, you were not good at Tron. Yeah, and that's also kind of where you get that point to when all of a sudden. It took 50 cents to play a game. You're like, what? Uh-huh. What? Uh, well, the, the ones that, that got... Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I mean, these are all kind of the same. But but yeah. uh, the the shooting games, like I, I posted uh, Operation Wolf. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sometimes whenever you do something for the first time, like play poker or whatever, you got beginner's luck, right? Yeah. And uh, we, were, we were visiting family somewhere... And we went to an arcade, and they had an Operation Wolf game. And for whatever reason, the gun was set on semi-automatic. It was. It <laughs> wouldn't just like. Brrr, it was like you had to pull a trigger for every every. And I killed. Like I made it through like six levels without losing a guy because wow. I was just able to control. Like I don't know if it was set on easy, but it all like, however it was set up, I was just like dominating. And so it became my favorite game ever. I'm like, oh, every time I see one of these, I'm going to drop a quarter in there. And the next time I saw one, I drop a quarter in there, and I'm like, and then like, dead. <laughs> I'm like, wait. 
what happened to the controllable gun? <laughs> like, like, but, uh, but yeah, dude. And then they had the two-player wolf, or or if it wasn't wolf, it was Operation something, where it was just like two Uzis in the jungle, just yeah. wiping everybody out. And then, of course, whenever you had jungle movies like Rambo and Chuck Norris and, uh, you know... Definitely the next phase. You, you kind of went from... You know, the, the cowboys walking across the street and shooting each other with a wagon in between. You know, he had that uh-huh. game to the next jump being, uh, you know, these kind of games where, you know, like you said, the action flick influence, right? And also, to go along with that, you also had started having some of the martial arts games, uh-huh. you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, those, those are the ones where you found yourself sneaking out quarters out of the house <laughs> <laughs> digging through the couch looking for something yeah. cuz yeah cuz like again operation wolf but then like afterburner oh yeah the the yeah. The, 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 the that was around uh, t- uh uh top gun yep so you're flying off f14 tomcat and you're just yeah you know schooling everybody and then you'd have to land it on the carrier which you could get really good at on the console at home but what you know, it's like move to the left, move to the right, pull up your, pull your nose up, pull your nose up, let your nose down, let your nose down. And you're like, you can't do a flyby, like you, like in real life, if if you're not flying right on the carrier, you can just fly over it and loop back around and try right. again. On, on this one, you hit the back of the carrier, you explode and die, and you're just <laughs> your quarters are gone. <laughs> but man, I dump I dump quarters into Afterburner all day because oh, Afterburner yeah. was so much fun. Yeah. And that's the you know that's the one that had like the little targeting thing again like just from Top Gun where it's like the the target would flip flip around on the screen and you yep. move your joystick and if you you, you know, move your your targeter a little bit too much then the plane would start to move and then the, the the machine would move with you and you're like leaning off to the side like ah it was that was so cool <laughs> yeah well and, and you're getting again to to more of the sensitivity of the thing versus before where it was just kind of. You know, spin the centipede ball. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, it didn't have any any repercussions really. I mean, you could still get shot, but this is where you're physically trying to land on this thing, and and everything is you know very touchy, and it just gives you more <laughs> reality of what's going on. Well, and you remember it was a it was later than Afterburner, but it was kind of contemporary with the gunship where the helicopter. Where you sat yep. in there and you pull the joystick and it would oh, yeah. like move the entire machine yeah. depending on like how you did things, whether you were playing or not. So if you didn't have quarters, you could go still go sit in a gunship and move the right. joystick and pretend like you were playing. <laughs> well, we had uh, about a quarter of a mile from my house where I lived. I, I grew, grew up in this town called Gleason, Tennessee. And you, you probably saw me and one of my school buddies talking about this the other day, but about a quarter of a mile down the road was a, a little general gas station. And video games was such a big deal at the time that they had a little closet off the side. You could tell this was made for just supplies, mm-hmm. cleaning supplies. I mean, janitorial supplies just for the place. They cleaned it out and put two to three machines in there. And, you know, I specifically remember just finding every quarter I could in the house and walk, <laughs> walking down there to, to play these games. And they were, you know, some some knockoff games. I think they, you know, they got some legit ones in there every once in a while, like Dig Dug or something like that. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it was games you never even heard of. Like I told him, I was like, there's this one game they had where you, you were a paint roller. And he was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. You were literally a paint roller. And I looked it up, and it's got some crazy name like Adigan or something like that. But you're a paint roller, and you're painting these squares on the screen, and you're fighting off these pigs that are coming after you. <laughs> no no idea why. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you, you, were, you were enthralled with Cubert, but you really don't know why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, and Cubert was another one where, unless the joystick itself was absolutely perfect, oh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fall off the side. Like Cubert oh, yeah. sucked. <laughs> but he was the first uh, the first arcade game that I know of that you know said ex- explicit stuff, even though you couldn't tell what it was. You know. Oh yeah, he's got he the would... little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
that Qbert was hard, man. Yeah, like it was. <laughs> that stupid snake, man. The snake that would bounce, right? He'd uh-huh. be coiled up and he'd just bounce. And you're just like, oh, man, it's hard enough just to stay on this this triangle of pads that we had here. Now I got to deal with this guy. <laughs> well, and then, then, like, later on, like, I don't know if it was, like, on the first or second level, but on the third, it's like, so you start at the top and you're bouncing. It's like you have to turn it from, like, gold to green, gold to yeah. green or gold to silver. And it's like gold to silver, gold to silver, gold to silver, gold to silver. And then if you hop back up, you change it back. Change it back. Like, right. No! Yeah. yeah you can't jump <laughs> so back up like, there. Yeah. You'd have everything completely done except for like two down here. And then you'd have yeah. to jump across and, and change them back. And then jump like, ah, Kubert. <laughs> it was the, it was too, the digital too, Rubik's Cube. <laughs> too much. Too much. Um, yeah, dude. And then, of course, when you had the the Karate Master, you mentioned the, oh, the, the fighting games. Like yeah. I liked that one so yeah. much. Karate um, Champ was my game, man. And the story behind that is uh, uh, the college was in Martin, Tennessee, so about 20 minutes away. That's where Pizza Hut and all this stuff was. And there was a head shop there called Next Door. That's where I got all my music. And uh, in the back, they had a Karate Champ game, and my poor wife, girlfriend at the time, <laughs> sat there hours on end and watched me <laughs> literally try to flip this machine over, <laughs> Tr- trying to play this game. And uh, she'll still bring it up from time to time. I'd sit there for hours. She said, I knew every artist they had in that place. <laughs> I can almost tell you the order of the cassettes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, like, that was one thing where where probably right about then, whenever those fighting games started to get interactive and people could play against each other in real yeah. time instead of two-player where they're waiting. Because yep. then, like, cause Karate, Karate Champ was followed closely by Street Fighter, which was then right. closely followed by Street Fighter 2. Right. And that's and where it, that's really, really exploded, man. You know? Big but, time. Yeah, because... You couldn't even imagine now. I mean, <laughs> you can't even list all of the names of the games that are based off that two-player scenario now. I mean, they're just, oh. it's just unreal. Well, and, like, I remember, because this would, this would have been in the, I guess when Street Fighter Two hit, was, like, what, yeah. like, 90, 91, something like that. Yeah. So I was in high school. Yeah. And it was, like... Yeah, it was the biggest it, thing. Dude, everybody was obsessed. Yeah obsessed and uh so from from where i live we've got when i was in high school we had town and country mall which was a dead mall and then we had memorial city mall which is about a half a mile away which was a completely live mall yeah so uh the the long sad story of town and country mall was memorial city was kind of an every man's mall and so they built town and country to be kind of a up, upper scale. It was like the West Side Galleria. And so they built it, and it was it was successful, and it fleshed out. But then a few years after it got built, then they decided to put in a tollway. And they wrapped the tollway right around the front of the mall. Wow. So you, you couldn't get to the mall without exiting and looping back around and going like through several stoplights and then Man. back in. Terrible. But, but the exit that you wanted to go... Like, if you're trying to get to town and country, the exit would drop you right in Memorial City Mall's parking lot. Hmm. So if you were going to a mall, you'd just go there. And so yeah. town and country died. And it died slowly over, like, I always remember it being, like, because they finally tore it down in, like, 2000 and built something else, which is actually a, a shopping center and retail stuff, like, retail hub that people go to now. It's, it's packed wow. all the time. But uh, town and country, dude. Like in the in the mid to late nineties, you can go in there and and they still had like a, a McDonald's up on the third floor that had closed like in the late eighties. Yeah. That still had like the McDonald Land seats and chairs and stuff. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it, it was it was neat, but yeah. So they had a they had a tilt like on the second floor, and but in Memorial City they had a couple of arcades and that's where all the guys would show up and like uh, uh, compete. Right. Sure. Yeah. So you you'd want to play Street Fighter, and you'd walk in, and there'd be like forty dollars worth of quarters lying in the top of the machine, and all along the windows, and up and down. So you were never going to get a chance to play, because even if these tournaments just lasted like thirty seconds, you had like four or five hours worth of quarters up there. Right. 
So um, my buddy was was obsessed. Um, he's probably not listening, but if he is, Jason Jordan, dude, this guy <laughs> would go and he he'd break like a fifty and take the uh, the magazine that told you all the cheat like all the not the yeah. cheats but like the the, the moves right. and he'd go up to the tilt in town and country because it was dead and he would just play by himself for hours until he mastered the game so well that he could beat anybody wow like and I'm like like I go like I'd wake up it would be summertime and be like okay where's everybody at I'd wake up roll on up like go to the mall walk up to the <laughs> tilt Jason sitting there playing like hang out with him for a little bit. I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna go to the pool, hang, catch up with the guys or something. Like, what you doing later? He's like, shut up, like, <laughs> Bl- Blanca. <laughs> like, okay, man. <laughs> it's like I I never got that big into it. I thought it was fun, but man, that was a like you say that was a that was a phenomenon. There was yeah. there was people that were full on addicted to that thing. Yep. And uh, my thing was like Street Fighter was fun. I enjoyed Street Fighter, but man, when they pu- pulled out Mortal Kombat, I was just like, <laughs> "You mean I can rip people's heads off?" <laughs> like, yeah, this I mean, is, and this the gra- is so much better. <laughs> the graphics too were like actual pictures of people. You know, they weren't uh-huh. drawn people. So, you know, that was really something as well. I mean, you know, it, it just well, again, it's just that technology, the 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 changes in it. That was. Yeah, I remember the first time seeing that, and was just, just you know, I loved Street Fighter too, and was pretty decent at it. But when I first saw the Mortal Kombat game, I was just like, "Wow, this is absolutely amazing." And, well, and uh, of course, <laughs> of course, you had in, in in Mortal Kombat you had both ninjas, but then yep. I remember because when Mortal Kombat came out, like I'd been so far removed from, but Raiden. Yep. Oh it's yeah. Like, it's like I know that guy. Yeah. Where do I know that guy from? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I know him. Where's Where's he from? And then later seeing Big Trouble in Little China, like yep. on a repeat, and like you're like, oh, yep. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, without a doubt, man. And then you had, you know, I, I like to always throw this one in there because I really enjoyed this game, which was Rampage, which was kind of the oh, same deal, except you weren't really fighting each other. You were just, you know tearing down buildings and of course they've recently made a bad movie of that too so mm-hmm. well, this is strange because I'm, the game wasn't terribly popular and I remember being like when they were like advertising the, the movie I'm like okay what is what is this and somebody's like yeah. it's the video game I was like the vi- that really <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the game you chose to make a movie of <laughs> I mean, okay. and it's funny, too, because it's like, okay, you can either be, like, Godzilla, or you can be, like, a wolfman, or you can be a giant, uh, what was the other one? King Kong, like, guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, it was, an yeah, ape, it was the ape, a right. lizard, and a wolf. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be Godzilla every time. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, but that that actually, you know, you had the, the, the huge console that had where all three people could be playing at the same time. That was kind of a neat deal, but the graphics were still kind of a step back. Right there was Street Fighter 2, and then, like you said, Mortal Kombat really made a, a big change there because then you started getting, like, Pit Fighter uh-huh. <laughs> and all these other games that were, you know, you could tell that were possibly made by the same people trying uh-huh. to do the same thing again, where you had the background of people cheering, but it'd just be like people going, eh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, right. Like, uh, it, it, just like the graphics in the last Star Wars movie, right? When you had all the Palpatines in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, was it uh, Aerosmith game, like in the nineties, where it's like the Aerosmith Revolution with the it's machine guns. And great it's like, game. It was, but it was just bizarre. Yeah, I mean, yeah like, it didn't like, make any sense. It was sense. A bizarre, like, like no, I mean, it was fun to play, but it was a weird concept. Yeah, it's like you're gonna you're gonna shoot up a warehouse for a while, and then you're gonna collect enough power ups, and then Aerosmith's <laughs> gonna pop out and sing you a part of a song. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, okay. I never quite understood that either because you're fighting people in toxic suits and all this stuff, and Aerosmith's gonna come out and sing "Dream On." All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it was fun, but it was yeah. weird. <laughs> which led up to another game that I that I threw out there, which was the the Terminator Two video game. That, that one was awesome, man. And I actually went all the way through that. I literally had people. It was me and another guy. First time I'd ever played it, and we made it all the way through the thing. Had people running and and getting. You know, here, take this, take these five dollars, go get me some more coins, so we can keep this thing going. And wow, uh, that that one was just. You know, it's sad now because I look at the graphics and I go, oh, "Wow, that really didn't look that good." <laughs> it's much the better is, in my mind. <laughs> the the thing is though, and and get you know to get you you mentioned a, a, a week or two ago about like CGI and. Like, there was to me there was never any any sort of disbelief when I watched Clash Clash of the Titans, right? Yeah. When I was a little kid and I was watching Clash of the Titans, I mean I wanted to be Perseus and Calibos was sure. evil and those scorpions were just as real as could be and Medusa was scary. And I think no, I don't. I, I've used this as an example just because the movie itself is so perfect. It did not need to be remade. Nothing yeah. needs to change. But if you, if you had to put a gun to my head and say, okay, we've got to do something, I'd be like, okay, we'll use some CGI to smooth out some of the stuff. Smooth out the stuff. Yep. And, and but then otherwise leave it alone. Absolutely. And and so I think going back and looking at things like Terminator, Terminator Two, I mean, those those movies were perfect for their time. Right. But they're also perfect now because if you think about what we could do now, mm -hmm. um, the Just... the stop motion effects in in that, especially in like Terminator with the robot and stuff like. Right. You don't realize that they they were doing like frame by frame by Absolutely. frame by like like yeah. in quarter second movements that now they can anybody with a decent Photoshop program on their computer can kind of do that. You but know what I mean? It's like I remember seeing where Harryhausen would say, "Hey, if I could get ten seconds of usable footage in a day, then mm -hmm. that was a good day." You know? <laughs> so you think about yeah, yeah. that. You know, that's that's incredible and and. Man, so uh, you go back to these video games where it's like, oh, well, it's you know, like the hard drives on some of these consoles are huge just yeah. to hold the levels and stuff, and the graphics aren't wonderful. But then in the next, the like two or three generations down the line, you know, you've got or not, well, even now you've got those mods that you know you can buy a box at Walmart that's this big that's got like four hundred games in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Don't think I haven't thought about it. <laughs> oh, sh I, dude, I have my moments, man. Like, <laughs> I th like half the time I walk through the house and I say stuff, and my wife's eyebrows don't quite raise, but they're on the way. Like, what, do, what do we need that for? Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the Billy alert went off, right? <laughs> oh, uh, he's at it again. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, to tell you the truth, that is that that statement's more true than you <laughs> probably know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's, she's like, dude, what are you up to now? I'm like, eh, I was on Facebook Marketplace. It was ten bucks. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we kind of skipped the whole NES thing, you know, because mm. that was such a big changer at home for everybody. The Nintendo NES with Mike Tyson Punch Out, Mario. You know, Super Mario Three, uh, all these games that are so iconic. Well, I think so, you said it. I think you said it perfectly in our in our commercial break when we were off air. That this is going to be a long episode, or maybe we can just talk <laughs> about it next time because you mentioned the arcade. Yeah, and right. we've 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 been we've been skipping skipping years in the arcade by itself without yeah. you know we talked about playing Pac Man on the console versus playing in the arcade, but yeah. It, Dude, taking it home between Mario and Zelda, like just the NES, and then wow. like the the console wars and the Game Boys and the Sega Genesis, the, man. That's dude, what I was all rocking. Of, all of that stuff. <laughs> I, I think we got to save that for another show because otherwise we'll be here all night. I agree. But um, so but hey, man, t t tapping off of uh, our Pit Fighter and Mortal Kombat and these games, you had the uh, what was it, Primal Rage games. <laughs> <laughs> so and you know so i mean it, it just kind of it just kind of kept going there for a while where it was these more computerized looking characters versus drawn characters but then 
on the other side of that, you had where you started getting the four-player games, like the Ninja Turtles game, where you could play mm-hmm. all four players at the same time, or the awesome X-Men game that came out. Yes. That I was going to say, probably, because just as a teenager, you don't know who you are. You, you think you're a metalhead, but you don't know how to play a guitar yet, and you think you're this, and you think you're that, and whatever. But I remember that that Universal Monsters game that came out. It had oh, yeah. Dracula yeah. and Frankenstein, and I think it had a bride, and it had a wolfman yeah. creature, and it played like Street Fighter, but it was like a four-player console that you could all play, like... They had a two. They had a two-player one that was in s- smaller, but they had a four-player one. And Frankenstein was just awesome. He was like built up like Zangief. He was probably a clone of Zangief <laughs> from Street Fighter Two. Um, but his his like whenever whenever he whenever you got his power up or whatever, he'd shock you because he's built with electricity. He's all Bzzz! and it was just so cool and I remember like playing that game and just being like okay I need to go like I need to revisit Monster Squad I need to go back <laughs> like I need to dig back into my history because you know it's like it's been a while it's like right. guys guys let's uh, let's get back into the horror movies because we've been out of it for too long <laughs> and so I, re- I remember that particular game kind of knocking me back into the video store really <laughs> yeah because I mean this was in the 90s you know it's like it, I'd been way past I'd you know, it's like we, we were watching like Independence Day and stuff like that. Right. But then, of course, you know, it's like okay, we need to go marathon all the Friday the Thirteenth movies. We got to see all these old black and white Universal movies. We got to watch all the whole Friday uh, Nightmare on Elm Street series, the Hellraiser series. Like, right. All right, that game pretty much triggered that summer. Of, That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, and I had almost forgotten about it until we were talking about it just now. I'm like, but dude, yeah, when Frankenstein is just like, bzzz, like shocking the hell out of the the Wolfman, I was like, all right, guys, I know what we're watching tonight, and it just <laughs> shocker, <laughs> yeah, Wes Craven, yeah, <laughs> but hey, man. That's that was, looks like it's gonna be a wrap. This has been awesome. Man. We, we 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 could keep on going for hours. But. We haven't even scratched the surface. There's so many games that you want to bring up that you know we just there's no I mean there's no end to it. So uh, with with what Billy's saying here, I mean you guys have already started it. Just kind of sharing your favorite games, all those ninja games, man. I was mm-hmm. I was eat up with those, man, and. Uh, Y'all just post your favorites out there. Hey, you guys forgot this one, or you know, uh, yeah, keep it going because we all played them. Everybody played uh-huh. them. So, oh yeah, it's and, and of course, the video games aren't going anywhere. It's yeah. like I, I was listening to something the other day that's like most of the current top songs are in video games. So you're like sure. playing virtual reality games on your on your phone or, or on your iPad or, or on your console and you hear a soundtrack in the background. Yep. That's that's a that's a song that's a, that's being sold right now on iTunes. Like uh, it's the biz- biggest music motivator that's that's been along since MTV and along in in uh, right. 30 years. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Um but yeah, um, join the Facebook group, guys. If you're not on there already, it is a fun community. Um, nothing negative, nothing but positive stuff. Everybody's having fun, throwing out their favorite, uh, you know, their car, their favorite car between Kit and the DeLorean or or, or Airwolf or whatever else. Um, we talked, like, the, the, the Jaws 2 episode went over really well, and I know for a fact that I, that inspired several other podcasts because fo- several podcasts I watch or I listened to, started talking about Jaws 2 right after we wrapped. Uh, Orca's where it's at, people. Orca. I need to go back and rewatch Orca, <laughs> but dude, <laughs> I saw an advertisement because HBO Go had just put on the whole Jaws series. Oh. And, and I was listening to our episode, playing back our episode on my way to do some stuff, and I was listening to us talk about Jaws 2, and I was like, I know what I'm watching tonight. <laughs> I went home and I watched Jaws 2 and I was like, I am not disappointed. This has been a blast. This it's is it's awesome. a great movie, man. It holds up. <laughs> so, 
I mean, but the funny thing is, I was inspired by us talking about it, being like, dude, they, they sound like they're having a good time. I'm going to go watch this movie. <laughs> and that was me. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a fun, uh, it's a fun Facebook group, though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hit us up. We've got to get off the phone right now so that we can start talking about what we're going to talk about next week. And uh, yeah, stay awesome, guys. Whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm.